Mastier technology, iPhone 14 Pro versus iPhone 13 speed test. Let's begin with a boot up in three, two, go. And we're gonna find out how much faster is your iPhone 14 Pro versus the iPhone 13 if you wanna go ahead and do the upgrade or if you just kinda wanna see you're planning on getting an iPhone 13 at its new reduced cost, how well does it stack up against the iPhone 14 Pro? This is gonna be a good video to see that. Look at those boot up at about the same exact time. We got the Joker colors today, but definitely got the green and we got the deep purple, but that was pretty close. I mean, overall, I wouldn't pick either just on that basis. That was a really close call. All right, guys, so in terms of the general performance, they both have Face ID, the same type of technology, so kind of opening them up is gonna be the same speed, but scrolling through, you will notice a little bit of a smoother display on the iPhone 14 Pro, but shockingly, the 14, even with 60 hertz, is a rather smooth smartphone. Feels almost like a 90 hertz Android phone. So definitely smooth, even though it's 60 hertz, but much smoother on the 120 hertz on the left. Other than that, generally going through, iOS actually performs identical on both phones, so you could save yourself a buck here and get yourself the iPhone 13 at its new reduced cost if you wanna save and have a pretty similar experience. Do keep in mind we are rocking out with six gigabytes of RAM on the 14 Pro and just four gigabytes of RAM on the iPhone 13. So both phones are on 16.1.1. Let's go ahead and begin with calendar and you could see about the same. Let's go into clock and you can see a little faster for the 14 Pro. We'll go into calculator here, pretty similar. A16 on the left, we do have the A15 on the right notch versus dynamic island. We'll probably see the newer dynamic island on the iPhone 15 next year that replaces the 13 and the 14. But for this year, it's only on the pros. And you'll see scrolling through. Honestly, when I look, I have to look closely to see the 120 hertz, but you definitely feel it. At the end of the day, you can see once we start getting into these loads, it looks like the 14 Pro, just a hair snappier. I think in the long haul, you might benefit from the Apple A16 CPU, but for now, eh, not really. Let's go into Instagram, and you can see Instagram first there. Look a little bit quicker on the left. Again, when opening these menus, not a major difference. Let's go into Twitter, and you can see Twitter first there on the right. I'm just gonna go to the profile page on both. Still first on the right, but not a great deal of difference. Let's go into Amazon. And you can see Amazon, similar. We'll go into eBay. And you can see eBay's first there on the left. And if I get any of these wrong, just call me out down below in the comments. Just say, Nick, you were wrong. Look like the iPhone 13 had that. We'll go to things to do. And you can see iPhone 13 doing just fine. And the reason why I do these tests is because I feel like, you know, day to day, I'm opening up a ton of applications. This is what I'm doing. I'm not playing a ton of million games on my phone. I do, I am aware a lot of people are gamers on their phones, but for me, I open up a lot of apps day to day. Um, Starbucks, and if you do want a little bit more gaming performance, of course, you're always gonna wanna go with the newer version, but let's go into Dead Trigger 2. But the thing is, is that with the Apple A15, they brought it over to the 14, so the 13 is not really not really feeling old at all. You see they can open up these games at the same time and I don't think there's anything on the App Store that's really gonna hurt the iPhone 13 even with its less RAM, but A16 probably would do a little bit better. At the end of the day, it's, it's really close. You can see iPhone 14 Pro won it out here. Um, I'm not sure what's happening on the 13 for this one but maybe it's trying to shut me up or maybe we had a load issue. It's a little bit too long here for the iPhone 13. So I might go ahead and do this one one more time. And I'm not trying to give it credit. I just wanna make sure that there wasn't a glitch there. Let's go ahead and do Asphalt 9 one more time. And if it does it again, then clearly, yeah, you see there was just something around there. Maybe it was the sign in or something. It was a lot closer here on this run. Let's go into Subway Surf and we'll see how we do here. And both of them, looks like the 14 Pro a little faster. Both of them doing just fine here in that game. Let's go ahead and swipe up out if it will let me. We'll go in the Crossy Road. And you can see Crossy Road looking a little faster to me 
is it the 13 or is the 14 pro gonna take it look like the 14 pro made us think it wasn't gonna take it but it did let's go into pubg mobile now and see which one can get to the lobby first but it looks like the looks like the iphone 14 pro is in the lead yep iphone 14 pro there first here comes iphone 13 just a little bit behind not a major deal whatsoever so you could definitely pay PUBG on either of these phones it's not like if you get the iPhone 14 Pro you have a major advantage let's go into Temple Run 2 and you can see Temple Run 2 is opening first there on the iPhone 14 Pro so okay gaming okay it's looking like it's a little faster for gaming on the iPhone 14 Pro we just have to call it how it is it's minuscule, it's very tiny. And honestly, I was running a test between these two. And I, if it's not for the cameras, or maybe, you know, having the dynamic island, these experiences are nearly the same. It would be, I would wanna get a lot of money first if I was getting rid of my 13 on a sale to get this cheaper because the experience is not a huge deal of difference. Let's go into 3D Mark, and you can see pretty similar. So overall, iPhone 14 Pro a little faster in the games, but pretty much same old, same old here on both phones. Of course, if we ran a you know video render test, maybe the 16 could pull ahead, but right now with optimization being pretty similar on 16.1.1 on both devices, I don't see it being way in front at all. So the 13 did very well, and it's a great deal right now being $100 less, whereas the iPhone 14 Pro is pretty cool with its dynamic island. It's very hot phone right now mostly due to shipping restraints but you know it's definitely fast but not overly impressively so like blowing away the iphone 13 so nothing like that so what i want to do now is take it back through these applications let's see if we can get a stutter on either phone i do think we might see a reload for the iphone 13 with the four gigs of ram we'll have to see though because that phone shocks me a lot of times doing so well you can see both of them are gonna restart up Asphalt 9, 14 Pro did that a hair quicker. And the 14 Pro did this. That looks like it started the game over, so let's see what happens going forward here for the iPhone 13 we're gonna be looking out for. We know with the six gigs of RAM, you seen that? That's kind of back to the home screen. So here is where having six gigs of RAM on iPhone is a little bit better if you are if you're the type of person who's a power user, going back through your applications a lot, like maybe you're doing some notes and then you need to go back to Safari and then you need to go open the calculator and you need to check the weather because you're about to leave for class. You know what I'm saying? Like you're going through a bunch of apps at once, then you'll definitely want to consider going to the iPhone Pro models with their six gigs of RAM. It just makes for a more snappy experience when you just need that little bit of extra punch with the RAM. Other than that, you're just opening a couple apps at a time or even five or six at a time. The four gigs of RAM on iPhone really is no problem. It kind of performs like an eight gig of RAM Android phone. Well, not quite, like a six to eight gig. And this one performs closer to like a 10 or 12 gig Android device. So definitely very good here with reloading the applications. But the 14 or the 13, I called it the 14 because they look identical. The iPhone 13 does reload once you get a few applications open let's test the warmness factor too let's see how they feel in the warmth and about the same so both very efficient chips inside of these devices right here and here are the final geekbench scores for both the apple iphone 14 pro and the iphone 13. now you can see in the single core we did go up 100 points or so which is okay and on the multi-core almost a thousand so pretty good on the multi-core so when you're really pushing it are you really pushing it though it's faster. However, keep in mind that these are not groundbreaking upgrades in the chip. This is not like if they went from the Apple A15 to like an M2 CPU and the iPhone, even though that would probably way overkill. These chips already seem overkill. It's not going to be that big of a difference in the real world application unless you, again, really push it or use those raw features and video edit on your phone then maybe you'll notice it but honestly iphone iphone 13 does pretty well and taking a look at the wildlife extreme test we just ran here there's a pretty sizable update here or 
win to the iPhone 14 Pro when it comes to the average frame rates. Battery life did go down about one point on each phone, but I would say this really shows more of the graphic power. And while it's not huge, six frames per second when you're running things that really push it like Genshin Impact or, you know, just maybe Call of Duty, things where you really push the CPU a little bit more and you want better graphics overall, you know, these, these phones right here, the 14 Pro will take the lead. Other than that, iPhone 13 remains a pretty good value. So yeah, if you're doing an upgrade, you'll get a little bit bump in performance, but do it for the triple camera, do it for the deep purple colorway, do it for the dynamic island. I wouldn't say so much, do it just for performance alone. Looking for a value though, iPhone 13 will be where it's at. Let me know if you wanna see a full comparison between these where we really break them down in detail more uh, to help you decide if you wanna do an upgrade or not. So that'll wrap it up. If you have an iPhone 13, you jumped over to the 14 Pro, share your experience with the community and subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here, be sure to be well. I'll catch you on the next one. Thumbs up and peace.